Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel, and now I'm answering question number 10, part B, from the May-June 2020 paper 4 from the IGCSE 0580 syllabus. This is the paper 4, variant 1, and this question, this question 10, part B, is all about um, finding the turning points of this curve. This is a quadratic function. I want to find the turning points. Let's find, work out the coordinates of the two turning points. So they've told us that there are two turning points. So this is it's not a quadratic, so this is a cubic curve. It has the highest power of x cubed, so it has two turning points. Now, a cubic curve has either a shape that looks like this, or it looks like this. If the coefficient of x cubed is positive, it will look like this. It will be kind of going up, then down, then up again. Right, so it comes from below, turns, turns again, and then goes up again. So when the x cubed has a positive coefficient, you have the maximum before the minimum. The maximum before the minimum. All right, if x cubed has a negative coefficient, you have the minimum before the maximum. So uh, we can kind of have an idea that our turning points, the first one, that we have the one with the lower x value is going to be the one which is the going to be the maximum okay now <coughs> to find the coordinates of the turning points we have to find the places where the gradient of this curve is equal to zero the gradient of a curve is given by you can say the tangent to the curve at the point where the gradient is zero that's the point where the line will be the tangent will be horizontal you can see that's going to be where the <coughs> the curve turns that's when you're going to have a zero gradient at that point the gradient will be zero so to find the gradient of a function you have to f differentiate it when you differentiate when you find dy dx find dy dx you are finding the gradient function the expression that you get when you find dy, dy dx will be the expression that will give you the gradient of the curve at any point you want to find it. So here, if I find dy dx and we find dy dx, we differentiate these type of expressions by multiplying by the power. So you have 3 times x squared and then taking 1 from the power. So 3 times x then, then to the power of 2. Multiply by the power, take 1 from the power. Same here, you have 8 times 2, which is 16, x to the power of 1. We don't have to write the 1 there. <clears throat> when you take 1 from the power, you don't have to write the 1 in the power. There's a 1 there. And then when you differentiate 5x, okay, when you differentiate 5x, you end up with 5. Whenever you have an x term, basically it drops the x. You can think of it as maybe if you want that the gradient of, of y equals 5x would be 5. Okay? Or you can think of it as 5x in terms of x would be x 5x to the power of 1. And if you multiply by the power, you get 5. If you take 1 from the power, you get 0. So you end up with 5. Okay, 5x five, to the power of 0. x to the power of 0 is 1. So when you differentiate that, you get this. And if there was a constant term at the end, we would then also um, differentiate that, which would give us 0. Any constant term, when you differentiate, becomes 0. So that's the gradient function. So now we have to find, okay, at the turning points, we know that at the turning points, at the turning points, we know the important fact that dy dx is equal to 0. The turning points, the gradient is equal to 0. So we can equate this to 0. So we have 3x squared plus 16x plus 5 is equal to 0. Now I have to factorize this in order to find the values of x. So it's pretty simple to do it. Now there's different ways of factorizing. The way that I prefer is to use this like kind of box method. I know a lot of students aren't used to this, but I'll show you different methods. So you've got, you got 3x squared and 5. You put the uh, first term, the x squared term, and the constant term in these two squares. Then you multiply them together, and you, that gives you 15x squared. So you're finding two numbers that multiply together to give you 15x squared, and their sum has to be this middle term, 16x. So this is the product, this is the sum. So the two terms are going to be x terms, they're going to be positive terms, okay, positive x terms, because you, know, you multiply them and get positive, you add them and get positive, and they must be multiplying to give you 16, um, 15 x squared, and adding give you 15, 16 x squared, so the only two terms you can possibly have is 15 x and 1 x. 
When you multiply them, I get 15x squared. When I add them, I get 16x. So you're going to have plus 15x and plus 1x plus x. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these two terms here and take out their common factor and write it in this point here. That gives me x. x time, then I think this number here has to be whatever you multiply by x to give you this. So x times 3x gives you 3x squared. And x times 1 gives you x. And 3x times plus 5 gives you 15x. Okay, that's one way of doing it. So you end up with 3x plus 1 times x plus 5. Okay, another way that people like to do this is by splitting the middle term, which is very similar actually. But they find two numbers that multiply to give you 15 and add to give you 16. Well, that's our 15x and x. So you can, you can write this as 3x squared plus 15x plus x plus 5 equals 0. And then you can take out the common factor, which is 3x. That's x plus 5 plus, there's no common factor, you write 1 times x plus 5 equals 0. So you end up with x plus 5, because x plus 5 is a common factor in these two terms. So x plus 5 times 3x plus 1 equals 0. Same answer. Okay, so you end up with the same thing. So now we can say x equals minus 5 and 3x equals minus 1, so x equals minus 1 third. So these are the two turning points. These are the x values of the two turning points. They want to find the coordinates of the two turning points. Okay, and the coordinates of the two turning points would be the, the y value. So when you say x equals negative 5, y is going to be, well, we put it back into this original equation. So it's going to be negative 5 to the power of 3 plus 8 times negative 5 squared plus 5 times negative 5. So you're able to just put this directly into your calculator and get the answer out. So you have minus 5 cubed. Okay, I'll just use brackets here, but minus 5 cubed. Okay, pl <coughs> plus 8 times minus 5, and then that's squared. And plus 5 times minus 5, and that gives us 50. So this is 50. Okay, so that's the coordinates, minus 550. Okay, that's one pair of coordinates, negative 5 and 50. And then you have when x equals minus 1 third, y is going to be minus 1 third cubed plus 8 times minus 1 third squared plus 5 times minus 1 third. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to put, um, what I'll do is this. I'll put minus 1 third. Okay, I'll put store that as A. Right now, I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to put in here. I'll change this for minus. I'll change this for A. So I'll do recall A. Okay, five times A. And this is. I'll put instead of this um, inside this bracket. I'll put A. And instead of this, I'll put an A as well. It's just I've changed. I've changed. I've called A one minus one third. As you can see from there, that's minus one third cubed plus eight times minus one third squared plus five times minus one third. And that gives us minus 22 over 7. So that gives you Y equals minus 22 over 27. So you got minus one third and minus 22 over 27. Those are the two turning points for B, and that's B part one done. So we worked out the coordinates of the turning points. Now part um, two is, I think it's on the other page. Nope, that's it, B part one. Is that, no, there is a part two. I think I'm hiding it with this. Yes, that's a bit bad, isn't it? So anyway, so part two is over here, and it says here, determine, and I, there must, if there's a part one, there must be a part two. Is hiding it with this um, label. So it says, determine whether each of the turning points is a maximum or a minimum. Give reasons for your answers. Okay, so now there's a couple of ways. One of the ways I've kind of already discussed with you, okay, that um, one of the ways, that the most common way actually is to use what's called the second differential, okay? So we take our dy dx, which is, we have dy dx, which is the gradient function, which was 3x squared plus 16x plus 5. That's 3x squared 
plus 16x plus 5. And what we could do is we could say find the second differential. The second differential is when you differentiate this a second time. So you find the differential of dy dx, which gives you d squared y, dx squared, which is going to be 6x plus 16. Now, if you substitute the x values of the turning points into here, okay, then we can then find out whether these are a maximums or minimums. So you have 6 times minus 5 plus 16, which is negative 30 plus 16. Okay, negative 30 plus 16, which is going to be negative 14. All right, so that's for this one. And here you've got dx, dy, dy, d squared y over dx squared is going to give you <laughs> 6 times negative 3 plus, so 6 times negative a third plus 16. That's going to give you a minus 2 plus 16, which is positive 14. Okay, so in this case, we found when x is minus 5, d squared y, dx squared is less than 0. Therefore, this is going to be a place which is called a maximum point. This will be a maximum. So the maximum is going to be minus 5 and 50. And in this case, d squared y over dx squared is greater than 0. Therefore, this is going to be a minimum point. A minimum point. So the minimum point is negative a third and negative 22 over 27. Now, why is that the case? Why is it when the second differential is, le is negative, you get a maximum, and when the second differential is, is positive, you get a minimum? The reason is as follows. It's because when you have a maximum, it looks like this. Right? What we're doing when we're finding the second differential is we're finding the rate of change of the gradient. We're finding how is the gradient changing. Now, when you've got a maximum, the gradient is going from a positive gradient, because it's like, you know, slanting upwards. It's going from a positive gradient to zero, where it turns, and to a negative gradient. So it's going from positive to negative. So the whole time, the gradient is decreasing. So it's like, for example, 4, then 3, then 2, then 1, then 0, then minus 1, then minus 2, then minus... The whole time, it's decreasing. The gradient, its value is decreasing the whole time. Okay? So the, the value is decreasing when you have a maximum the value of the gradient the, the 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 value of the gradient keeps decreasing so that the rate of change of the gradient is less than zero it's negative when you have a maximum when you have a minimum however it looks like this the gradient starts from a negative value and it's becoming so like for example negative five negative four negative three negative two negative one zero one two three the gradient is continually increasing as you go along it's going from negative to positive all right so the rate of change of the gradient is positive because the gradient is increasing the whole time so when you have a minimum point the rate of change of the gradient which is the second differential d squared y dx squared is always going to be a positive value okay so that's one way of justifying um, giving reasons for your answer there's another way as well for cubics as I described in the beginning of the uh, question here that we can say here, I'll just write the, the reasoning down in a, in a neat way so you can understand. So I'll write it over here. So we can say as the gradient, as y equals x cubed plus 8x squared plus 5x plus 8x squared plus 5x is cubic. Okay, and the coefficient the coefficient i'm trying to be as neat as i can of x cubed is positive okay therefore it's it's going to be up and up it's maximum occurs before it's minimum something like that would be fine Okay, if you want to draw a little sketch, up and up, maximum, minimum. Okay, therefore, the first x value that you get is minus 5, 50 is the maximum. And the second x value, the one that's further along, is minus a third, minus 22 over 27. That's a minimum. For, quadru for, for cubic curves, 
you can use this as your justification if it's a cubic curve all right this this is justification that would only work for cubic curves you know the shape of them and you can mention that the previous justification this justification will work for any type of function okay any type of function even if, you, if it's not a cubic function okay to find the second differential and to show that it's positive um, at, at, at a turning point we'll show it's a minimum and to show that it's negative at a turning point show that's a maximum okay so the second justification we use in boxed here would only work for a cubic function but the first one works for any type of function so there we have the answer to question number 10 part b this is a relatively new part of the syllabus this was introduced in 2020 um, to be examined in 2020 for the first time so it's it's kind of new you won't find that many past paper questions on it before 2020 you won't find any before 2020 in fact anyway so this is um, the end of this question and the end of this paper I hope you um, enjoyed and I hope you understood and learnt and um, hope it will prepare you or help to prepare you for your exams um, here we have um, at the end of the video you will see a playlist that will show the questions from the rest of the paper this particular paper showing up and you'll also find a playlist in this area over here which will be all concerned with differentiation the topic of differentiation um, and I'll also put a link somewhere over here to the part A of this question 10 just like make that complete because that's in a separate video okay so you can subscribe to the channel over here thank you for watching and see you soon